what is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwestern Pennsylvania it's Memorial Day weekend it's uh, Saturday work's been crazy we have grinds on sale for a dollar ninety nine like you care but in today's video we are going to be kind of talking about a little controversial topic oh by the way real quick i figured out how to get that uh screen from black to white just in case you're wondering how to do that just hold down select or this down arrow here and uh it changes it i thought that was pretty cool i like the white it looks good with the white but uh today's topic is kind of a little bit of a controversial topic and I want to start off by saying I am not condoning going fast um, at all. That's not what I'm saying. But I also understand it is extremely easy to want to go fast. Um, and whenever I say fast, that's kind of a objective, subjective. Um, because what's fast to you might not be fast to me and what's fast to me not might might not be fast to you You know what I mean? So since I'm a new beginner rider a new beginner rider since I'm a newbie uh, What's fast to me might not be fast to a lot of you guys. I like how I can't see I could have went um, So, you know, just just keep that in mind so, you know, again, this is kind of like a controversial topic because speed limits are there for a reason. You know, speed limits are there not just to protect you, but to, to you know, to protect other people. You know, it, it has to do with like total stopping distance and stuff like that. You know, there's a reason why the speed limit is 25 in a residential. That's because you have many intersections, driveways and kids and you just have a bunch of situations where you might need to stop abruptly so you know I'm not telling anybody to to be a speed demon or anything like that I just understand the fact that you're going to because I do and you know it if you're going to do it you might as well do it in the most safe way you possibly can if that makes any kind of sense. Look at all the flags. It looks really, really nice. Um, so, I guess, you know, before you even start going fast, I think the first thing you really got to do is uh, make sure your motorcycle is up to par. Um, your tire pressure, your fluids, you know, that kind of stuff. Because, you know, whenever you start really getting in the corners, and stuff like that think about on a physical aspect what's going on you know you have this idea of trail braking I talked about it before you know that's the idea of when you brake the nose of your bike dips down what does that mean it means it's shifting weight since you have a small contact patch with the ground uh, whenever you're shifting that weight you know it's uh, it's essentially making it more sturdy. Think about it like this. If you have your hand flat out and you're leaning up against a wall, right, you have a force there. Now don't do this because you'll probably break a finger, but that same idea, but put your a finger out and lean on it. It's going to be a lot more uh, pressure, right? Pressure is a, an area unit. Can I make this? I think I can actually make this. I never make it. Turning our heads. Oh, way. I missed that one bad. You see that? Missed that one. Uh, what was I talking about? So, you know, I really forget what I was talking about. I, was talk I went on a rant about force. Oh, oh, because we're talking about tire pressure and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, you know, just make sure that your tires are up to par. Also, before you start, you know, speeding off and stuff, make sure that your uh, make sure that your tires are warm. Okay, that's a really, really, really big deal. I noticed pretty 
pretty quickly the difference between warm and cold tires. In the mornings whenever I leave for work, I don't go crazy because the roads are still kind of cold and my tires are cold and I, I, I can feel that. You can, you can really feel it. You know, it's almost like the tires feel harder. Uh, and like you can almost kind of feel every little bump it seems like. That's what I noticed anyways. Um, you know, maybe that's necessarily not the case, but make sure that your, your tires are warm. But before all of that stuff goes, you know, I, I guess what I, what I want to talk about is, you know, there's a time and place for everything. And I know, I know at the end of the day, the best place to do uh, your shenanigans is on a racetrack. I don't really know how much it costs to do that. Uh, I talked to a couple people and it's like in the thousands of dollars range and I can't afford that. I mean motorcycling in general can be expensive and then to add something like that you know then you get to track prep your bike and all the stuff that goes on with that so I, I can't afford to do it so I know that there's other people that can't afford to do it but you know if you're going to do it make sure that you're doing it at a safe time you know for me the best time that i found out to do it was about 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning because the kids are at school and the parents are at work and you're kind of minimizing that traffic like right now would not be a good time to get the zoomies it's uh, five o'clock, everybody's leaving work. So there's a lot more traffic. Kids are getting off of school buses, things like that. So, you know, and now that we're getting in the summer, kids are gonna be off <coughs> of school. So, you know, you really wanna try and figure out when you can do it and where you can do it. Do not do uh, your, uh, your zoomies in residential areas i mean there there's way too much at risk you got you know lines of houses with driveways that could have kids that could have cars that could have pets all kinds of things and remember a posted speed limit is there for not only your safety but their safety you know 25 mile an hour speed limit in a uh, in a residential you know they don't just pull that number out of their ass that has to do with stopping distance and reaction time and all that kind of stuff. So don't do it there. You know what I mean? Find a road kind of like maybe this or, you know, a back road or whatever that you know is not very populated to go and do your runs. Whenever you also do on your runs, what I like to do is even if I've been on the road a lot, things change. This is not a racetrack. Racetracks are predictable tracks this is not predictable even though you might know the road there could be uh somebody carrying a bunch of tree limbs and dropped one off in the middle of a turn that you wouldn't see until it's too late kind of situation so what i like to do is i will go and i will do a run through the track i'll just ride the ride the road that i want to kind of go fast on scout it out see what's going on because you never do know you know even if everything's up to par with your bike and your skill level and your tires are warm and the roads are warm and you're feeling good there's still that underlying variable that can happen and that's why it's not good to go fast on public roads because they are unpredictable where a racetrack is very predictable um so the the other thing you know you kind of want to you kind of want to think about is um is uh y you know what's how are you feeling i think that's another interesting idea because i want to do another video about throttle therapy and my take on it and i don't necessarily have anything against throttle therapy I think that there's a misconception of what throttle therapy is I mean if you haven't been on a bike and you think oh man I can't wait to get on the bike and just zone out and relax and just enjoy that that's not 
good. That's not good. That's not throttle therapy. And if you think that's throttle therapy, you really need to take a step back because this is a sport. This is an engaging activity. There is nothing protecting me except my gear. If a deer comes out or a chicken or whatever happens, there's nothing protecting me. So the idea of relaxing and just being carefree and not thinking about things or forgetting your problems that's not a good thing now if you're taking throttle therapy and the idea that you are completely engaged in what's going on and you don't have time to think about your problems okay I'll give you that but also you know you want to be in the right head mentally you want to be in the right head mentally. Uh, I remember a, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Whenever my ex-girlfriend broke up with me, a couple, uh, like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes after she broke up with me, I took a ride over the mountain. It was dark and rainy, and I flew down that mountain, man. I was doing like 95, 100 plus down a rainy mountain. And it only took me about eh, 13, 14 seconds for that line in The Walking Dead to, to scream in my head and I think it was Michonne she was talking and she says anger makes you stupid and stupid gets you killed and I firmly believe that you know if you get on a bike with the wrong attitude because you're pissed off at the world and you just you're going to make a mistake and a mistake in a car is a lot different than a mistake on a bike which can be fatal you know things happen in seconds you know, 42 mile an hour in one second, I already traveled over 20 feet. You know what I'm saying? So that's 20 feet in one second that I'm riding. So make sure that your head is on right. You know, again, again, I'll say it a million freaking times. This is a sport. Treat this as a sport. You need to be mentally clear. You need to be physically clear clear you can't be sick you can't be hung over you definitely can't be intoxicated in any way shape or form you need to be able to perform okay you are an athlete when you're on a bike whether you want to think of it like that way or not I kind of do do you know what I mean you know moto racing is a legitimate thing it's a it's a sport you know it's a it's a very engaging sport so you have to you have to be mentally sound i think you know and if if you just want to you know go fast because you're you're pissed off about something i don't think that's the best way to handle it you know uh, i can't remember what moto vlogger i just seen but the motorcycle is not your therapist i'm sorry if that offends anybody the motorcycle is not your therapist again i get it if you have a bunch of things that you're worried about but you're still mentally sound you know and maybe riding a bike helps you forget about that because you're so engaged in everything else that's going on i dig it i, I i'll vouch for that but just to just to think to get on a bike and zone out or to ride angry i don't i don't think that's a, a very good thing uh you know and the other thing with with going fast is you have a lot of risk and i'm not even talking about actual physical risk to you and yourself i'm talking about cops and i'm going to tell you something that i'm kind of embarrassed to even say uh i almost got in a lot of trouble yesterday and i was riding uh doing 75 80 and a 35 that would have probably taken my license away impounded my bike and the cop i just seen him he just pulled into uh his little tuck-in spot and uh he missed me he missed me or you know whatever happened he didn't go after me but that could have been a dangerous situation one again the speed limit there is there for a reason you know what I mean? But two, I mean, 80 and a 35, we're talking about like doubling and tripling the speed limit. You know what I mean? So, I don't know why I wave at Harley guys anymore. I noticed, I noticed something. 
I never wave at Harley guys that aren't wearing gear. The ones that are wearing gear, they wave back, it seems like. But the guys that are just riding their their bikes without no gear, fuck them. <laughs> no offense. But, um, yeah, you know, you run the risk of, you know, them impounding your bike or doing other stuff if you're you're riding that fast because here's the thing and you already know it is extremely easy to get up to speed on these bikes i mean zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds or whatever it is is quick that's fast that's like supercar fast you know what i mean and it's very easy to 37 47 that was 10 miles an hour in just that little twist of a throttle so you know I, I guess what I'm getting at is, is it's easy to do and I get it and if you're going to do it please do it safely you know what I mean obviously wear your gear all the gear all the time uh, I need to get better gear I acknowledge the fact that I need to get better gear these gloves I don't really think they're going to help me that much I, I honestly don't and that's one of the things I really need to upgrade my uh, my jacket I want to upgrade my jacket you know what I mean and uh, you know all that costs money or whatever but it's a it's a sound investment I think uh, what else do you want to talk about about going fast you know we uh, we just talked about gear we talked about time of day we talked about the cops uh, we talked about your mental and physical uh, well-being how you how you feel there uh your brake your your brake your bike you know make sure your bike is up to par you know your your tire pressure your fluids make sure your brakes work make sure your 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 chassis is in order just make sure everything works you know what i mean because there's not a lot of room for error you know if you know you're you're riding down the road in the twisty and you're you know your chain pops off or whatever you know you're going to have a bad time and you know that's just the way it is and the other thing you have to understand even if you do everything right your bike's up to par the roads are great everything is perfect your mental state everything is perfect there's still that variability of something bad to happen because of road conditions that's that's let's think about your suspension and uh i don't have a lot of room so i can't really but you know this is your suspension okay this is total collapse of your suspension there's no suspension left if you're going through this turn and you use this much suspension and then you hit a bump now you're this much suspension right we're going over that suspension that front tire is sliding out you know these roads they change there's imperfections they're not perfect roads unlike a racetrack so if this is your suspension you collapse your suspension because you're you know you're braking appropriately and you're doing everything correctly but then you hit a bump and now your suspension goes even you know less than what you have it it's there's nothing there to absorb that energy your tire is going to wash out on you and then you're going to wreck so you know just keep in mind that you know while going fast is fun i get it like this person here i can't tell you how bad i want to pass them i mean i think the speed limit is more than no they're going like exactly 35 oh cool they're turning but you know there's a time and place for everything guys you know what i mean here's a nice little sweeper turn if you watch the cornering video we talked about these where we're going to maintain throttle we're looking through the turn we're maintaining throttle we're maintaining throttle maintaining steady pressure maintaining pressure we're looking through the turn steady throttle do to do do to do and then we're done now i got a downshift because this is a bitch of a turn for whatever reason and there you go so yeah guys i think that's pretty much you know all i kind of wanted to talk about whenever it comes to going fast and again i'm not telling you to go fast but i understand that you're going to i understand you're going to because i do 
I didn't think I was going to be one of those. I knew I wasn't going to go to the speed limit all the time, but I really didn't think I was going to be able to, you know, ride my bike in the sense that I can, uh, you know, comfortably get up to 75 mile an hour, be able to trail break and go through a turn at 50, 55. I didn't think I would be able to do that, especially relatively soon, but unfortunately, I can and I only say unfortunately because I wasn't trying to do that I just wanted to ride a motorcycle I never wanted to be a speed demon I never was like cars I, I never was a speed demon it's funny the only time I ever was was when I bought a motorcycle go figure I don't know what it is um, but yeah guys I'll, I'll let you guys go I just wanted to say that, and again, I'm not telling you to go fast. I just acknowledge the fact that you're probably going to, and if you're going to, you might as well do it as safely as you possibly can. Do you know what I mean? I should have been in a lower gear. But I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's Memorial Day weekend. Don't forget why we celebrate Memorial Day weekend and what it all represents and a shout out to you if you were a veteran thank you so much for everything that you've done you sacrifice a lot more than you realize you know even if you haven't lost your life a lot of a lot of soldiers come back mentally you know i don't want to say fucked up but mentally messed up you know what i mean and that's a lifelong sacrifice you know what i mean so i love you guys i appreciate everything you guys do Thank you for subbing up. If you uh, if you like this content, give me a like and a subscribe, and drop a comment. That helps me know that I am doing uh, something right. Right? It just helps me know that I'm doing something good. So I will talk to you guys later. I will see you later.